This is the first water-cooled graphics enclosure I've seen. So let's test it out and see if it makes any difference to performance compared to a standard air-cooled eGPU. Briefly for those that don't know, an external graphics enclosure like this connects to your laptop with Thunderbolt 3 allowing you to use the power of desktop graphics cards in your thin and light laptop which may not even have discrete graphics. There are various overheads associated, but essentially this does allow you to get some nice GPU power on a machine that doesn't otherwise have any. The Aorus RTX 2080 Ti gaming box comes ready to go out of the box, so the 2080 Ti graphics is included and inside. It's even got a Karen case if you want to take it somewhere like a LAN party with your laptop. It comes with a 50cm Thunderbolt cable and power cable. Setup is extremely simple. Just connect the gaming box to your laptop with the included Type-C Thunderbolt cable and connect the box to power. At this point, you might need to run Windows Update if you don't have the necessary Thunderbolt drivers installed. Then simply open up the Thunderbolt Control Center and approve the device. From here, Windows might start automatically grabbing an outdated NVIDIA graphics driver. So get the latest from NVIDIA and install that. From here, you should be good to go. I'm testing with the Electronics Max 17 gaming laptop and we can see the 2080 Ti showing up in Task Manager. Now we could play games with the laptop screen, however this will result in worse performance as there's more overhead involved, as the laptop needs to send data to the GPU over Thunderbolt. Then the GPU needs to send the display signal back over Thunderbolt to the laptop. For this reason, I'll be testing with an external monitor connected to the gaming box as this will offer a performance improvement, and honestly, better experience. The idea of an external graphics enclosure is that it sits at home on your desk. You can travel with a thinner and lighter laptop, come home and hook it up with one cable. For this reason, in a docking scenario, I think it's completely practical to also have a larger monitor on your desk connected to the gaming box. If not, just expect some performance loss using the laptop screen. This sort of setup also works well because of the rest of the I.O. available on the gaming box. It's got Ethernet and USB support too, so you can connect external storage, devices like mice and keyboard, and even gigabit network, all of which will become available just by connecting that single Thunderbolt cable to your laptop. The 2080 Ti also has three DisplayPort outputs and HDMI. If your laptop supports charging over Type-C, the gaming box will also charge the laptop with up to 100 watts of power delivery, so it can really be a nice single cable docking solution. Let's take a closer look at the gaming box itself before diving into some benchmarks. It's all matte black metal, and the size is on the smaller side compared to other eGPU enclosures I've used, owing to the fact that it's been designed around their Waterforce 2080 Ti, so it doesn't have to be larger to cater to other options. The downsides of this are that I don't think you'll be able to upgrade the GPU down the line, as the back panel has predefined cutouts for the GPU I.O., but maybe you could still do it with the back panel off, it just wouldn't be ideal. The left and right sides have holes and act as air intakes, and both sides have dust filters. On the right, we can see there's a fan to aid airflow. The 450 watt power supply is down the bottom, which offers two 8 pin power cables for the GPU, and we can just see the block and tubes on the GPU. The top is the air exhaust, and again, just a bunch of holes. Underneath here, we can see the 240 radiator used as part of the AIO cooling solution. There are 220mm fans underneath it, which exhaust air up and out. On the bottom, there are some rubber feet to reduce movement and vibration, as well as some vents. The front has the Aorus logo in the middle, and a third USB Type-A port towards the bottom, so easier access if you need to connect something. There's also RGB lighting down the bottom of the front, which should help boost FPS, and it can be controlled through the software that came on the CD, or downloading it through the Aorus product page is easier if you're like me and haven't had a disk drive for a decade. The software lets you monitor the card and tweak it. You can manually adjust things like fan speed, GPU and memory clock speed, however voltage appears locked. Rather than manually tweaking, I've just used the scan button which took about 40 minutes to complete. Basically it runs a bunch of tests and creates an overclock curve specific to your graphics card which should be stable. Here's a quick look at the stock performance compared to the overclock settings, so a little boost is possible with this. Given this is a water-cooled card, we're after optimal performance, so the rest of the game testing will be done like this. That's enough info, let's see what sort of performance we're actually looking at. I've tested with the Electronics Max 17 laptop as this has Thunderbolt 3 support, and it has an Intel i7-9750H CPU and 16GB of memory and dual channel. 
I've tested the water-cooled Aorus gaming box and also my Mantis Venus enclosure with my air-cooled 2080 Ti, which happens to also be an Aorus card. And to keep things fair, I've also used the automated scan overclock setting for best results here too. First, let's start out with the temperature differences, as this should be one of the major advantages of the water-cooled gaming box. At idle, the air-cooled card was 12 degrees warmer. When gaming with the fans on the default automatic speed, it was 17 degrees warmer. And then with the fans at maximum speed, there's a much greater improvement to the water-cooled card, which was now 26 degrees cooler, quite a difference. And this is with a game running at 4K ultra settings. As expected, the water-cooled card was also hitting slightly higher clock speeds, which makes sense as better cooling allows GPU boost to do its thing. Granted, the difference wasn't all that big. Now let's take a listen to the fan noise differences from both options. The water-cooled gaming box was louder at idle. You can hear some of the pump noise along with the fans. When actually gaming with the fans at the default auto speeds, the water-cooled gaming box was quieter. Then with the fan set to maximum, it was a little louder. But realistically, I doubt many people are going to be running either solution at maximum fan speed as it's quite loud. So under normal scenarios, the gaming box was quieter than the air-cooled card. Now let's take a look at the actual differences in gaming performance. Call of Duty Modern Warfare was tested in campaign mode. The results were interesting and not what I expected. I've got the water-cooled gaming box shown by the purple bars and my air-cooled card in the red bars. And the water-cooled option was slightly behind. Granted the gap closed in at higher resolutions. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested using the game's built-in benchmark. Once more my air-cooled card was outperforming the water-cooled gaming box. Why? I'm not exactly sure. As we saw earlier, the water-cooled option was much cooler and able to reach higher clock speeds. Control was tested running through the same part of the game in both configurations. Yet again, the air-cooled option was coming out ahead, though the difference was basically nothing practical once we get all the way up to a 4K resolution. Honestly, the performance was a little disappointing. Going in, I assumed it would be a little ahead, but that wasn't the case in the games tested. That said, the water-cooled gaming box was clearly running with much lower temperatures. And it was also quieter in these tests. The air-cooled card seems to draw more power from the wall, and the GPU power reported by Hardware Info was also higher there too. This may explain the higher performance. It's worth noting that for some reason, increasing the voltage of the water-cooled unit was locked in software, and while this could be done on my air-cooled card, I didn't do it here. But that could possibly widen the performance gap further with some manual overclocking. Finally, let's look at pricing. You can find up-to-date prices linked in the description. If we look at the price differences, the Aorus RTX 2080 Ti gaming box goes for around $1,560 US dollars on Amazon, or $2,470 Australian dollars here in Australia, which is actually a bit cheaper after converting currency. The Mantis Venus eGPU enclosure I've tested is $300 US dollars, while the Aorus 2080 Ti is $1,300. dollars but it actually ends up being slightly more expensive. Again, something I didn't expect. I just figured the water-cooled option would come at a premium, but apparently it's less money than the alternative setup I've got and compared to. I think this water-cooled eGPU has its place, but I feel it's targeting a niche within a niche. External graphics enclosures are already fairly niche. For most people, you'll still get pretty good performance just using a gaming laptop with discrete graphics. And these can still be quite portable. If you want to play higher resolutions, then the power of the eGPU could be worth it. But you're probably going to spend the amount of money on that setup you could get a sweet gaming laptop for. Anyway, they do have their place. It's just a niche for people who really want one machine with extreme laptop portability when they travel, and the option of more power at home. And a water-cooled variant of that would be for a certain subset within that niche. The gaming box is a cool idea, pun intended, but the possible lack of upgradability compared to a traditional enclosure which outperforms it may be hard to justify. The place where the gaming box is undeniably ahead is in the thermals, so I think it comes down to just how badly you want cooler temperatures. Let me know what you thought of the Aorus gaming box down in the comments. Is an eGPU something you'd consider? And if you're new to the channel, make sure you get subscribed for future tech videos like this one.